We're not here for any other reason, God, but to glorify you, God, to worship you, God, to lift the name of Jesus high tonight. Father, we thank you for what you're going to do tonight, God. Something new, God, because that is who you are, my God. A God of new mercy, God. A God of new grace every single day, God. I pray, God, that as we worship, God, as we praise, God, that we will lay everything down at the altar, Lord. There's people out there dying right now, God. There's people out there worshiping in subways, God, while hiding, God. And I thank you, God, that we have the, the opportunity, God, the privilege, God, to openly worship, God, to openly praise, God. It's not about us, God. It's all about you tonight, Jesus. It's all about Jesus. We lift you up, Jesus. Be glorified tonight. everything down tonight, God. If it didn't cost us, God, we won't leave it, God. Father, you give everything for us, God, and we give everything to you tonight. We give you glory. We give you glory. Come on, come on, come on. Let's lift up, let's lift up a sound of worship in this place tonight. Because we give you all. Rising up 
in this hour. Come on, there's an army rising. There's an army that's rising up in power. If we bring killing the peace to the kingdom, hell won't prevail against us. So church, it's time to rise up. Come on. In Jesus' name, give a push. If we bring killing the peace to the kingdom, hell won't prevail. So church is time, church is time to rise in Jesus' name and Jesus' name. Give a push back, praise. It's time to give a push back, praise. Come on, it's time to push back, push back, push back, push back in the name of Jesus. Push back. Push back, push back in the name of Jesus. Push back, push back, push back in the name of Jesus. Push back, push back, push back in the name of Jesus. Come on, no weapon form can prosper against us. We serve the God of angel armies. So we take up our position as we praise, he's confusing the enemy. No weapon form can prosper against us. We serve the God of angels. Only. Come on, so we take up our so position. We take up our position. As we praise, as we praise, he's confusing the enemy. No weapon form can prosper against us. We serve the God of angels. Only. So we take up our position. As we praise, he's confusing the enemy. As we praise, as we praise, he's confusing the enemy. 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 As we shout, as we shout, he's confusing the enemy. As we shout, he's confusing the enemy. As we shout, he's confusing the enemy. So we push back. Push back, push back in the name of Jesus. Come on, can somebody push back? Push back, push back in the name of Jesus. All resistance, push. All religion, push, push back. All depression, push. push back in the name of Jesus. Push back, push back, push back in the name of Jesus. Come on, if we have been given the keys, Put up the next verse. It says, if we have been given the keys to the kingdom of heaven, hell shall not prevail. Hell shall not prevail. Hell shall not prevail. So as we praise, come on, we're going to confuse the enemy tonight with our praise, with your worship. Come on, because he knows that you've been battling. So when you start noticing on his bear, the one I'm dealing with right now, and I'm still going to give him the honor, you're confusing the enemy because you're not no longer looking at your situation. You're not looking on your battle. But now you're saying, God, despite the circumstance, I'm praising. Come on. Come on. No weapon form can prosper against us. We serve the God of angel armies. So we take up our positions. As we praise, he's confusing the enemy. No weapon form can prosper against us. We serve the God of angel armies. So we take up our position. As we praise, he's confusing the enemy. No weapon form can prosper against us. We serve the God of angel armies. So we take up our position. As we praise him, confusing the enemy. As we praise, as we praise him, confusing the enemy. 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 As we shout, as we shout, he is confusing the enemy. As we shout, he is confusing the enemy. 
shall be stay, shall be stay. Tongues and daughters shall be stay in this place. Sons and daughters shall prophesy, prophesy, prophesy. Sons and daughters shall prophesy in this place. Sons and daughters shall prophesy, prophesy, prophesy. Sons and daughters shall prophesy in this place. walked in this place feeling empty. You can't feel the spirit anymore. But if you were in the prayer room today, what I believe God wanted to do is pour down the heaviness of his glory. And so today, if you've walked in this place asking God, I just need a sign that you're real. I just need you to breathe on me. I need you, God, to put the weight of your glory upon my shoulders. And so tonight, what I believe he wants to do within some of you that came in weary in this place tonight, what he wants to do is he wants to open up the floodgates of heaven of what he's going to do tonight. If you can receive this tonight, just grab a hold of it right now. What he wants to do is open up the floodgates. And what he wants to pour out is his Shekinah glory. What he wants to pour out is the happy weight of his presence. And what you ought to do is just receive, just receive, just receive tonight. 
That's all you have to do in this place. So we're going to take a moment. Just lift up your hands and receive his glory. Can you do that for a second? Can we do this for a second tonight? Come on, we're going to wait on him. Because this isn't about us. This isn't about the worship team. This isn't about the pastor. It's not about the speaker. And it's not about the leadership. But we only serve one man and one man alone in this place. Only he can heal you. Only he can deliver you. Only he can do it all. So what you ought to do tonight is fix your eyes on the one that could do it all for you. Not your neighbor. Not your spouse. Come on, just receive. Look into the heavens and receive tonight. The weight of his glory. The weight of his glory. The weight of his glory. Ah! this song come on let this place cause can you hear me? the sound of heaven touching earth the sound of heaven touching earth our father and all of heaven rolls your name so sing Victory for 
gonna make your praise it loud. The enemy has been defeated, and I couldn't hold you down. We're gonna lift our voice in victory. We're gonna make your praise it loud. The enemy has been defeated, and I couldn't hold you down. We're gonna lift our voice in victory. We're gonna make your praises loud. So come like a flame of fire, a mighty rushing wind. Our praise will rend the heavens. Come for a fresh again. And come like a flame of fire, a mighty rushing wind. Our praise will rend the heavens. Again, and come like a flame of fire, a mighty rushing wind. Our praise will rain the heaven. Come from the fresh again, and come like a flame of fire, a mighty rushing wind. Our praise will rain the heaven. Come from the fresh again. Fresh again. So come from a fresh again. So come from a fresh again on your sons and your daughters from every tribe and every age and every race, from every nation and every country and city. Come from a fresh again. Just the voice to sing, come like, come like a flame of fire, a mighty rushing wind, a praise, come fall, come like, come like a flame of fire, a mighty rushing wind, and a praise from the heavens. So come from the fresh again. Amen. How you doing, Powerhouse Church? Amen. Awesome praise and worship. Amen. Tonight I have the great honor and privilege of uh, opening this service up in prayer. Amen. So before we get started, amen, we first we want to lift up God himself, amen. God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit, amen. Amen, because it is, it is only because of them that we are who we are, amen. Amen, in this place alive, amen, with the Holy Spirit moving in this place. We want to lift up our pastors. We want to lift up the ministry, the church, amen. We want to lift each and every one of you up that is here, amen. Thank God for all of you faithful people that come out. Amen. 
but I know it's been a hard day of work, amen, and you all came out. Praise God. I thank God for that, amen. So we just want to go before God and just, just lift up all these people, amen, that are in the Ukraine area that are being attacked by the Russians, amen. Amen. We just want that God to move in that place, amen, and let them know that God is with them, amen, and as they cry out, they cry out unto God, amen, and that God moves in that place. So lift this. Let's just open up and pray, amen. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, we just praise you. We thank you and we give you glory, my God, for all that you are doing right now, my God, in this place, Lord God. In each and every person here, Lord God. Father, we pray that your Holy Spirit just moves in this place, just flows in this place from chair to chair, my God, from heart to heart, my God. Father, touch us, Lord. Touch every man, every woman, Lord God. Let us not leave this place, my God, the same as we came, Lord. Lord, speak to our hearts. Speak to our minds. Lift up our pastors, Lord God. Protect them, Lord God. Give them divine wisdom, knowledge, my God, and understanding, my God, of what you have for them, Lord God. How to lead your flock, Lord God. Father, I pray, my God, that you will move in Lord God, that you, my God, shall speak to us in the name of Jesus, Lord God. We pray, my God, for the people, my God, in Ukraine, my God, that you will move upon them, Lord God. Let them know you are with them, Lord, in the name of Jesus. We just praise you, thank you, and give you all the glory. We all say amen and amen. Take a minute and greet one another, amen. We have some important announcements coming up. Get your pen, your paper, your calendars because we don't want you to miss out what we have coming up. New visitors, this one's for you. We want to bless you with a cup of coffee and all you have to do is scan the QR code when you come in and fill out the survey. And after you fill out the survey, you can go into our foyer where the coffee ministry is there and they'll give you your cup of joe. Hi Powerhouse Parents, reminder, if you have a baby and you have yet to dedicate him or her to the Lord, we do baby dedications here at Powerhouse Church every Sunday. So please see Pastor Belinda for further detail. Hey Powerhouse Couples, it's Pastor Hector and Rosie here, and we are super excited to announce our marriage retreat. It is coming up and you want to be a part of that and we will have it in the lovely Palm Springs with our very own pastors, Pastor Joey and Meredith Zamora. Listen everyone, it is 475 and it'll be the best investment that you can make in your, in your marriage. Uh, also, we wanna remind you just click on the link below and we, we need your $100 deposit, non-refundable deposit by March 13th. March so 13th. please sign up, yes. invite every married couple that you know, whether they're struggling or they just want to flourish even more in their marriage, and we know you're going to be blessed. August the 4th through the 6th. Sign up, sign up, sign up. We're super excited because here at Powerhouse, we're not just a Sunday till Wednesday church. We also gather on Fridays, which is our Bible studies. We have Bible studies all throughout Orange County, so make sure you see a team leader or check out our social media where you can get further information. Amen. How's everybody doing this evening? Blessed? Amen. It's good to see all you people here, all you lovely faces. Amen. Just uh, one more announcement that we forgot. Um, donations for Easter baskets coming up. Amen. There's going to be a box in the foyer. Uh, we want to donate uh, for the kids, candy, baskets, eggs, whatever, before April 10th. Amen. So there'll be a box in the foyer. Go ahead and 
drop in some donations, drop in candy, drop in eggs, filled eggs, it doesn't matter. Just take it in there so they can bless the kids. Amen? Amen. Amen. So let's go ahead and give to God this evening. How many people are ready to give? Amen. If I could have the ushers and usherettes come forward, amen. If you need an envelope, raise your hand. Amen. Well, I was uh, uh, going over this. Well, first of all, there's three ways to give. Text to give, amen, 714-710-1981. Online at powerhouseoc.org. Or you can give by check, cash, debit card. Amen. If you need an envelope, raise your hand. I was going over uh, tithes and offerings, and uh, my wife sent me a list of things, and it said, trusting God with their money. It says five principles for trusting God with your money. Number one was take your fear and anxiety to God. He can handle it. Number two, trust God with your money. He owns it anyway. Number three, recognize your dependence on God. Number four, practice contentment in both good and bad times. Number five, be generous to others just as God has been to you. Amen. Amen. Proverbs 16, 3 says, Before you do anything, put your trust totally in God and not yourself. Then every plan you make will succeed. You know, all of us have plans. All of us have desires and wants that we want in our lives. But we have to put God first. And we put everything in God's hands. He's going to open those doors. He's going to, you know, make a way. He's going to... You know, when you don't see or you're struggling, you're going through something and you don't see the, the, the light at the end of the tunnel, those are the times where you got to trust in God, amen, because he is there for you. He is the one that's going to open those doors, amen. So we just got to believe and trust in God, amen, with our finances, with everything that we have. Put him first and he's going to, you know, come through, amen, time and time again. And don't forget to be faithful to the heart for the house. So if you made a pledge, you made a donation and you Let's, want, let's keep that going. Let's keep that pledge. Let's keep that, you know, so, you know, we can keep things on here. We keep the lights. We can make it more beautiful. And we, you know, just the sound equipment, whatever we have that we could just glorify God with. Amen. So let's go ahead and pray. Father God, we love you. We thank you, Lord, for what you're doing in this place, Father God, for every person that's going to trust you tonight, Father God. We just put all trust in you, Father God. We know that you're going to open doors. You're going to open, you know, ways that we don't see a way, Father God, that you're going to just open our, our eyes, Father God, and trust in you, Father God, that you have a plan for whatever we put in your hands, Father God, Lord. Lord, we thank you, Lord, for this church, Father God. We just ask that you just bless the offering, bless the giver, Father God, a hundredfold, Father God. We love you, Lord. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Amen. Let us sing it as we get tonight. Come on. Form can prosper against us. We serve the God of angel on this. So we take up a position as we pray to his confusing the enemy. No weapon form can prosper against us. We serve the God of angel on this. So we take up a position as we pray to his confusing the enemy. No weapon form can prosper against us. Serve a God of angel armies. So we take up our position as we praise He's confusing the enemy. 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 As we shout He's confusing the enemy. As we shout He's confusing the enemy. As we shout, he's confusing the enemy. Amen, church. How are we doing this evening? Yes. Wow, man. You guys are ready. Amen. Let me, let me get situated here. Situated. Amen. <laughs> Sound like Mike Tyson, that's situated. <laughs> Amen. God is good. Amen. Amen. So I'm up here again. You have to see my ugly face again. Amen. Uh, this is a continuation from last week. Amen. So um, uh, the, the title of my message is The Fire of My Altar. Amen. So I'm just, I'm just going to jump right into it. We're going to get through my main scripture. And some points from last week, and then new points from this week. Amen? 
Let's get into it. Leviticus 6, 8 through 13 says, Then the Lord said to Moses, Give Aaron and his sons the following instructions regarding the burnt offering. Regarding the burnt offering. The burnt offering must be left on top of the altar until the next morning, and the fire on the altar must be kept burning all night. In the morning, after the priest on duty has put on his official linen clothing and linen uh, undergarments, he must clean out the ashes of the burnt offering and put them aside the altar. Then he must take off these garments, change back into his regular clothes, and carry the ashes outside the camp to the place that is ceremonial, ceremonially clean. Come on now. Meanwhile, the fire of the altar must be kept burning. It must never go out. Each morning, the priest will add fresh wood to the fire and arrange the burnt offerings on it. He will then, uh, he will then burn the fat of the peace offerings on it. Last scripture. Remember, the fire must be kept burning on the altar at all times. It must never go out. Amen? Amen. God is good. So last week, um, I told you guys that... Um, that we're going to need a, a, few, a few things to build our fire, amen? And the things that we're, that we're going to need is wood. We're going to need the fire. And the fire is going to need oxygen, right? And because we are priests, we'll need a sacrifice. Amen. And so last week, the, the, um, the first point I had was the wood, and the wood that the wood that we need to add to our offering, to add to our uh, our fire every morning, is the word. Amen. In verse twelve, it says, "Each morning the priest will add fresh wood to the fire and arrange it, and arrange the burnt offerings on it." We need to add fresh wood, fresh word to our fire every morning. Amen. Fresh word. We need to have the word every morning. I put the word first because the this is where it starts. Amen. It starts with him. Without the word, you don't have salvation. Without the word, we don't have prayer. Without the word, we don't have sanctification. We, without him, we, we really don't have the world. We don't have anything he has created. Amen? We don't have faith. We don't have truth. We don't have clarity. We don't have him. And apart from him, we can do nothing. John 15, 5 says, I am the vine. You are the branches. If you remain in me and I in you... You will bear much fruit. Apart from me, you can do nothing. Amen. So we must cling to him in the word. We must be getting into the word every morning. Amen. Another log that we can add to our fire every morning is prayer. And prayer is vital because without it, we are saying uh, we can do it without him. That I don't need you, Lord. I can do this on my own with my own strength. I got this, Lord. All I need is a cup of coffee and a, and a donut to get me through my morning, right? I'll put you third. I'll put you fourth. Maybe, uh, maybe I'll get into prayer later on tonight if I have time, Lord. Later on in my priorities. That's a wrong way of thinking. Amen. First Thessalonians, First Thessalonians 5.15 says, pray without ceasing. Ephesians 6.18 says, and pray in the Spirit on all occasions with all kinds of prayer and requests. With this in mind, be alert and always keep on praying for all the Lord's people. Without the word, without prayer, it's easy to compromise. It's easy to fall back. Amen. And we must be alert. Amen. If we're not alert in prayer, if we're not alert, then we're just being ignorant to the scriptures. We're just being ignorant and, and unaware of what's going on in the spirit. We're being unaware of what's going on and what the enemy's trying to do and his tactics, amen. We need to be alert in prayer. Amen. Do not be conformed to the ways of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Each morning, the chosen people, because we are priests, we must add fresh wood. And the third point to this is repentance. We must add repentance to the, our fire, amen. 
Now, it's not limited to these, on, the, these three points only. There's, there's many points. There's many things that we could add to our fire, amen? There's obedience. There's faith. There's, there's our action, our works that we can add to the fire, amen? There's many more things than this. But these are just three things that I want to highlight, amen? Without repentance, our hearts become hardened. We become proud. We become prideful. And, with, and, and the word says pride comes before a fall, amen? And David did, uh, David did horrible things. He planned and plotted and, and lusted after, amen? He, he laid with a woman that wasn't his, and he had plenty of women, in those days, he, he was a, he, I, want, I don't want to say aloud, but he had, amen. So he laid with a, with a woman that wasn't his, that was, a, that was married to another man. He murdered that man and tried to cover it up, but yet he was still named a man after God's own heart. Why was he named a man after God's own heart? I mean, I could think of somebody else that could be, that that. that that name could apply to maybe Joseph or, or even Job, amen? But he was the one that was given this name, a man after God's own heart. Even after he tried to cover it up, God, cover it up God saw what had happened and sent a prophet. With a little help from the prophet Nathan, his eyes were opened. His eyes were opened to what he had done, and he repented, Amen. We might not be like David by killing a lion or killing a bear and, and rescuing his sheep from those, from, from those animals. We might not be like David in the way that he, slayed, that he slayed the giant and defeated the Philistine army. But here's how we can be like David. We too have done horrible things. We also have planned and plotted and schemed to get our way, have lied and manipulated uh, people and situations. We are liars and thieves. We are murderers. Murderers in, in thought, in, in our hearts, the word says, with profanity on our tongues, unclean lips, lust in our eyes, watching things that we shouldn't be watching, having evil thoughts and desires. We are capable of evil things. We must know this about ourselves, that we are sinful. Even if it seems that we are not hurting anybody, we are hurting ourselves, abusing ourselves. But here's how we can be like David. We can repent of our ways. And turn toward Christ, amen? And we also we will be men and women after God's own heart, amen? Proverbs, Proverbs 28, 13 says, Whoever conceals their sin does not prosper, but the one who confesses and renounces or turns from them, they will receive mercy, Matthew 3, 8, produce fruit in keeping with repentance. We must be keeping with repentance as we walk, amen? 1 John 1, 9 says, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just and will forgive us our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. This says that he will forgive us. In the future, he will forgive us. Of the sins that we commit in the future, he will forgive us. If we confess our sins... He will forgive us our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. Repentance is not only for the unbeliever when they get saved, but it is also for the believer. Psalms 139, one of my favorite scriptures, Psalms 139, 23 says, Search me, O God. Now the book of Psalms is, is a hymns and, and, and songs and, and poems that are written toward the Almighty. Amen. And King David was one. Keep that scripture up there. King David was somebody that, that knows God already, right? He knows him. And he is, he is one of the ones that had, has written a lot of the Psalms. And he notices something about himself, maybe a little dark patch on his conscience, a little blemish on his character, or a huge blemish, I should say. And he says, and he says I might need to repent of this. Lord, search me, O God. It says in verse 23, search me, O God, and know my anxious uh, and know my heart. Test me and know my anxious thoughts. Amen. Verse 24, do you have it? Point out anything in me that offends you. Point out anything in my heart that offends you, Lord. Point out anything in my mind that offends you. Anything that I've done, anything, anything that I've thought that offends you. And lead me back to your everlasting ways. And lead me along the path of everlasting life. Amen. 
we need to have a prayer of repentance in our hearts. We need to be saying, Lord, forgive me for I have, uh, I have hatred in my heart or I have lust or gossip for doing the things I did, for saying certain things that I said, for even having certain thoughts about you, God, that I shouldn't be having, for not fearing you the way I should. Lord, forgive me. When I look at repentance, some of the greatest stories in the, in the Bible is, is that of Peter or, or the prodigal son or Paul, once named Saul. These are good stories of repentance. And let me just uh, uh, point out Peter's uh, repentance, amen? His story, Jesus, uh, um, Jesus says, as he's about to be uh, led away to, to be crucified, amen, he says, all will fall away on account of me. But Peter says, even if all fall away on account of you, I will never fall. Jesus says, truly, I say to you, I believe he's looking straight in his eye, straight in Peter's eyes with a calm, still voice. Truly, I say to you, this very night before the rooster crows, you will disown me three times. But Peter, as stubborn as he is, as, as, as usual, right? He reaffirms his previous statement. He says, even if I have to die with you, I will never disown you. I'm going to move forward here in Matthew 26 to move forward in the story. So he denies him twice already. And on the third time, we pick it up in Matthew 26, 73, if you guys have it. In the NIV, it says, after a little while... Those standing there went up to Peter and said, surely you, are the one, surely you are one of them. Your accent gives you away. So he has already denied, he, he has already denied Christ twice already. So he's already kind of heated. He's already, uh, um, how would you say, he was frustrated or scared. He's already fearful here of what's about to happen, right? So he says, then he began to call down curses. This is one of, the, one of the disciples. Then he began to call down curses, and he swore to them. He swore to them, saying, I don't know the man. And immediately, the rooster crowed. Then Peter remembered the word Jesus had spoken. Before the rooster crows, you will disown me three times. And he went outside and wept bitterly. He was in regret here, in deep regret here he fell away from christ they all did really but peter fell pretty hard because he was the bold one now now the scripture says it's okay to be bold but peter was bold in who he was bold in himself amen he was bold in himself even if all fall away he says i never will he puts too much confidence in himself, too much confidence in himself. He says, I never will. But Jesus is, Jesus is persistent, amen. He is faithful. Jesus appears to the disciples several times after his resurrection. Not once does Christ rebuke Peter, but each time he, he, that he meets with them, he encourages them and encourages them and strengthens them and gives them hope and more insight and more understanding more reason to believe that he is the way, the truth, and the life. Amen? And Peter then goes on to preach to 3,000 men, and they were added to the kingdom that day. How did he get that, that fire in him to come back from that? How did he get that? Amen? In Acts 2, 38 and 39, he says, Repent and be baptized as he's preaching to the, to the 3,000. Repent and be baptized. How can he tell these people to repent if he himself has not repented? We need to have that repenting spirit in us. Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus for the forgiveness of your sins. And you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. This promise is for you and for your children and those far off. For all whom the Lord our God will call. John 20, 21 to 23 says, again, Jesus said, this is one of the times that he appeared to them after his resurrection. He says, peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, I am sending you. 
And with that, he breathed on them and said, receive the Holy Spirit. This brings me into my next point. And my next point is oxygen. Our fire needs the oxygen, amen? And our oxygen is the Holy Spirit. Now, this point here will need its own sermon, amen? It will need a full sermon, a full sermon to, uh, to fully explain what is going on with the person and the work of the Holy Spirit. But I want to give you two main points about the Holy Spirit. And one of those is that he gives you, he gives you oxygen and he is the breath of life, right? That's one point. He is the breath of life. The second point is that he gives you understanding in the scriptures. Now, it is a must as a believer in Christ to have the Holy Spirit. I will go as far to say that you are not a true believer if you don't have the Holy Spirit. I'll tell you why. In Romans 8, 9, it says, You, however, are not in the flesh but in the Spirit. If in, fact the Spirit, if, in fact, the Spirit of God dwells in you, anyone who does not have the Spirit of Christ does not belong to him. Now, let me just say, if you just got saved, if you just got saved a week ago, two weeks ago, two months ago, you're, you're on the right track. I'm not trying to disqualify you. You're on the right track. You are good. Amen? But there is a, we need to follow up with something. We need to follow up with, um, with really with an order. There is an order to things, amen? And John 3, John 3, 5 in the ESV says, Jesus answered, truly, truly, I say to you, unless one is born of water and the spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. So it is a must. Unless one is born of water and the spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. Luke eleven thirteen 13 says, if you then who are evil... Know how to give good gifts to the children, to your children. How much more will the Heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to those who ask him? So my first point is, <laughs> of that, is that he gives life. Job 33, 4 says, the Spirit of God has made me, and the breath of the Almighty gives me life. The breath of the Almighty gives me life. Just as God breathed into Adam and gave dust to life because Adam was dust, he raised him up and gave him life. Christ also gives you the Holy Spirit to give you life. Just as the Holy Spirit gave Jesus life when he was conceived in the womb, he gives us life. Amen. The Holy Spirit gives us life. Just as you have the fire in you when you first got saved, Jesus will give you the Holy Spirit that gives life to the fire. They complement each other. Jesus and the Holy Spirit, they complement each other, amen? Just as fire needs oxygen, they, go, they coincide, amen? Job 32, 8. But it is a spirit in man, and the breath of the Almighty gives them understanding. The Holy Spirit gives us understanding over life circumstances, amen? Over different situations, Without the Holy Spirit, when we read the word, we have no idea what we just read. <laughs> when we read the scriptures, he reveals, Christ in the, he reveals Christ in the scriptures as we read and gives understanding in places where normally it would have gone right over our heads. As many of you, when I first started out, I was like, whoa, what did I just read? I have to read it like 20 times to try to, try to understand it. And at the end, I still don't. In John, uh, John 20, 21 through 22, it says, Again, he said, Peace be with you, as the Father has sent me, so I am sending you. Then he breathed on them and said, Receive the Holy Spirit. Now, my third point to this is because that we are priests, right? Priests need a sacrifice for the altar. Because we are priests, God's chosen people, we need a sacrifice. Now, what is that sacrifice? The sacrifice is not Christ dying on the cross again and again and again, but it's our flesh that needs to die. Our flesh is the sacrifice. 
Galatians 5, 20, uh, Galatians 5, 24 in the ESV says, And those who belong to Christ, Jesus, have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. Let me ask you something. How often do you want things? How often do you hunger and seek for food and wanting to satisfy king's stomach, especially when you're trying to fast and do godly things? How often are you seeking pleasures? How often are you seeking money and greed, power and position? It's like a daily thing when it comes to our flesh. This is something that Christ doesn't do to us. He doesn't put our flesh to death. He doesn't put our flesh on the cross. The Holy Spirit doesn't do this. Our spouses don't do this. Amen. Our pastor doesn't do this. Our leaders don't do this. This is something that the individual must do. This is something that is done by the believer, by the one that belongs to Christ. Something that we must do. Amen. Can you put up Galatians 5.24 for me? Galatians 5.24, and those who belong to Christ Jesus have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. Amen. Galatians 5.19, now the works of the flesh are evident with sexual immorality, impurity, sensuality, idolatry, sorcery, enmity. Uh, it says witchcraft, hostility, strife, jealousy, outbursts of anger, selfish ambition, dissensions, factions, envy. Oh, my gosh, it goes on and on. And drunkenness, the, the, the flesh will get you carousing and things like these. And which I have forewarned you, just as I have forewarned you before, that those who practice such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. We must continue our lives in these fleshly bodies. We must continue our lives in these fleshly bodies, right? These weak vessels. The word says that the spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. Weak to what? It's weak to temptation. Weak to sin that leads to sin and the doorway to sin. Genesis 4 says that God warns Cain when his face was downcast because God looked on favor of Abel's offering and did not look with favor on Cain's. Then the Lord said to Cain, why are you angry? Why is your face downcast? If you do what is right, will you not be accepted? But if you do, if you do not do what is right, sin is crouching at your door. If you do not do what is right, sin is crouching at your door. It desires to have you. But you must rule over it. Amen. We must rule over our flesh and constantly put it on the cross. Amen. John 3, 30, I don't think I gave this one to you guys, but he must increase and we must decrease. Romans 6, uh, 6 through 8 says, knowing this, that our old self was crucified with him in order that our body of sin must be done away with. So that we would no longer be slaves to sin, for he has died, for he who has died is free from sin. Now, if we have died with Christ, we believe that we shall also live with him. Amen. In verses 11 through 14. So you too consider yourselves to be dead to sin, but alive to God in Jesus Christ. Therefore, sin is not to reign in your mortal body so that you obey its lusts and do not go on presenting parts of your body to sin as instruments of unrighteousness unrighteousness but present yourselves to God as those who are alive from the dead and your bodies as part your body's parts as instruments of righteousness for God for sin shall not be master over you you shall not uh, you are not, excuse me, under the law, but under grace. Amen. Luke 9, 23 through 24 says, And he was saying to, to them all, If anyone wishes to come after me, he must deny himself and take up his cross daily and follow me. For whoever wishes to save his life will lose it. But whoever loses his life for my sake, he is the one who will save it. We must... Deny ourselves daily and take up our cross daily. Amen. 
These are things that we need to do when we, uh, when we are building an altar, amen. As priests, these are things that we need to do, amen. May I have the, may I have the worship team up here? In John 20, 19, Thomas wasn't, Thomas wasn't here in, the, uh, in, in this scripture. Thomas wasn't here in, the, in this first meeting that, uh, that Christ appeared to the disciples. Amen. But as Christ is ministering to the disciples, as he is speaking, he shows them his wounds. He shows them his hands as as he has a, a big hole in his hands and he has a hole in his side because of the piercings, right? But as he is speaking truth, he shows them his hands. Right? But Thomas wasn't here in this meeting. And, um, and later Thomas hears about what happened from the other disciples and is in disbelief. They say that we have seen the Lord. He is here. We have seen him. And Thomas says, and Thomas, uh, Thomas says, we have, uh, excuse me, they told him, we have seen the Lord. But Thomas replied, I won't believe it unless I see the nail wounds in his hands and I put my finger into them. I place my right hand and place my right, excuse me, and place my hand into the wound in his side. Oh, ma imagine a hole in his side and he's, and he's looping his fingers through his, through Jesus' hands, Amen. And he's feeling it. This, this is what he's saying. I won't believe it unless I do this. I won't believe it unless I put my hand into his side. But Christ is so faithful, amen. He is so persistent for his bride. I'm in, I'm in all of his character. A week later, he visits the disciples again, including Thomas this time, saying, peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, put your fingers here, Thomas, as he's ministering. Put your fingers into my wounds in the hands. And, he, and he's looping his hands. He's looping his fingers through the holes and through the wounds of his hands. Put your fingers here. See my hands. Reach out with your other hand and put it into my side. Feel it. Feel my wound. And he says, stop doubting and believe. Stop doubting, church, and believe. Thomas said to them, my Lord, my God. Then Jesus told them, because you have seen, because you have seen me, you have believed. Blessed are those who have not seen, yet have believed. That is us today, amen. This is one of the reasons why I, like, I love the scriptures, because we haven't seen him in the flesh like Thomas has, like the disciples have. We haven't felt the, his wounds like Thomas has. But he was still able to meet Thomas where he was at in his disbelief and still show himself to him and still prove himself continually. He is still faithful. He continues to be faithful. He continues to be persistent to us, our stubborn minds, our, 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 our disbelief. And he says, because you have seen, you have believed. Blessed are those who have not seen, yet have believed. Amen. We haven't seen him, but we are blessed because we still believe him. We still believe his word, that his word is true then and now, that he still does miracles, signs, and wonders. Amen. And that he will continue to do them. Amen. To prove who he is to us. Amen. He is coming back for us. Amen. Now, I call upon the unbeliever tonight, if you haven't received Christ as Lord and Savior, and you would like to, I ask that you would just raise your hand tonight. He is willing and able to forgive you of your sin, and he desires to save you, amen. He desires to adopt you into his family as son and daughter. He desires that relationship with you. No matter where you're at tonight, if you're hurting no matter where you've been, if you're in a pit, no matter what you've been through, no matter what 
has happened to you, no matter what your father said about you or your mother said about you or if they left you and abandoned you or abused you, physically, mentally, he is willing and able to forgive you. He sees you right where you're at tonight. He knows what you're going through and he sees you. He sees the hurt in your heart. He sees the pain in your body, amen. And he wants us, amen. He wants you tonight. He is waiting for you tonight. He sees you right where you're at. He sees right through that shame. Right through the unworthiness that you think you are. And he's calling you, amen. If you feel a tug on your heart, amen, I just ask that you would raise your hand and we'd love to pray with you, amen. If you would like to accept... I just want to extend this invitation right now to those watching online, those that are on Facebook. Um, if you've never accepted the Lord as your personal Lord and Savior, right now, I just want to extend this invitation to you right now. Just repeat these prayers after me. Heavenly Father, I come to you today. I confess my sins and I ask that you come into my heart. Forgive me, Father God. Come into my heart. Change my life. Move, Father God, that I may follow in your footsteps. In Jesus' name. If you repeated that prayer, I believe that you are saved. It says in John 3, 16, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whoever believes in him will not perish but have everlasting life. So right now, I thank you for joining us online. And if you said those prayers, reach out to us, follow us on Facebook. We love to see you here at service.